warning. Sulfuric acid is corrosive. Bromobutane is cancerogen. This video is for educational purposes only. I wanted to show you the Wurt synthesis reaction, but I didn't have a halogen substituted alkane. Fortunately, it's relatively simple to make one from an alcohol. In this video, I will show you how one butanol is converted to one bromobutane under laboratory conditions. I started by adding 240 grams of potassium bromide in one liter beaker. To the salt, I added 400 milliliters of distilled water. The steering was turned on and the bromide started to dissolve. This step proved to be very endothermic. It is actually so endothermic that the solution's temperature can even get below zero. However, with the decrease in temperature, the dissolution becomes slower and slower, which would just waste my time. That's why I turned on my hot plate to heat the solution and accelerate the process. When almost everything was dissolved, I put an addition funnel just above the solution. The funnel was charged with 200 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. When all the bromide had dissolved, I started to add the acid dropwise. Contrary to the potassium bromide, the dissolution of sulfuric acid is very exothermic. To prevent the temperature from rising too much, I put the beaker in an ice bath. By adding sulfuric acid to the bromide, we convert it to hydrobromic acid which is needed to brominate the alcohol later. The vapors you see are mostly hydrogen bromide because this acid, just like its cousin hydrochloric acid, likes to fume. The heat from the reaction also helps. If the temperature goes too high, the sulfuric acid will oxidize the bromide, turning it into bromine. We don't want that and that's why I use an ice bath. However, Going too low is also bad, because the resulting potassium sulfate is not very soluble when the temperature is low. It crystallizes, making the solution impossible to stir. At this point, I had no other choice but to give up on the ice bath and continue to add the sulfuric acid, ignoring the rise in the temperature. This didn't go as bad as I thought, and even when the temperature was about 70, a negligible amount of bromine formed, just enough to slightly colorize the solution. I was afraid that due to the large amount of crystallized potassium sulfate, the solution could start to bump. I decided to remove most of it by firstly cooling the solution once again in the ice bath to let most of it crystallize. Cooling it too much however would result in all of the contents solidifying, which is not good. The next step was to decant most of the solution into my 3 neck to 1 liter round bottom flask. The final portion could not be decanted, so I opted for a simple gravity filtration through some filter paper. Now that I have my solution, mostly freed from the salt, I add 88 grams of the alcohol, which in my case is one butanol. If you notice, my butanol has a bit yellow color and that's because I already used it as a solvent to recrystallize the Bradys reagent. By the way, this video is great, so go check it out from the link in the top right corner. 
even though I distilled the butanol afterwards, it still came a bit yellow. Despite what Explosions and Fire says, chemistry is trying to avoid things turning yellow. It is perfectly fine and will work for our reaction. I added it to the flask and then equipped it with a reflux condenser. And the last component we need is to add 110 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid just for good luck. Its addition, as always, proved to be very exothermic, so I decided to add it through the condenser instead. The next step was to heat the solution under reflux. At this point, I realized that I might have overfilled the flask, but whatever, we are all gonna die one day. The flask was heated on an oil bath until it started to boil. The particles you see flowing inside are boiling stones to reduce the risk of dying, I mean bumping. Here is the reaction that is going on. We generated hydrobromic acid by adding sulfuric acid to potassium bromide. This method of preparation is called in situ. Instead of wasting time to prepare and purify the hydrobromic acid separately, which normally would take several hours, we achieved the same result by mixing the reagents beforehand. Then we added the butanol which would react with the acid to form bromobutane. The reaction proceeds efficiently only when the pH is very low, so that's why I added second portion of sulfuric acid. The reaction mechanism involves formation of oxonium cation which requires very harsh acidic conditions. The now formed oxonium group is very good leaving group. And when the bromide attacks the carbon closest to this group, it is substituted and water is released forming the bromoalkane. Soon enough oily drops started to form in the flask. You can see it as the darker color inside the vortex. This is our product, bromobutane. It has darker color because it is the better solvent for the bromine and extracts it from the water layer. After 3 hours the solution decolorized. You can clearly see the top layer of bromobutane. I rearranged the flask for a simple distillation and continued the heating. Soon milky drops started to come over. Bromobutane has a very close boiling point to water, so they distilled together. Halfway through the distillation, two layers separated. My product is the lower layer because it's denser. In the end of the distillation, I had about half of the flask filled with bromobutane. The rest was water, so I had to separate it. To do this, I used my separatory funnel. The lower organic layer was drained, while the upper water layer was discarded. The organic layer was charged back into the funnel and to it I added about 50 ml of distilled water. The funnel was capped, shaked and vented towards the bromobutane. The lower layer was again drained off and the water layer discarded. Next, I washed the bromobutane with about 30 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid. This is done to remove any unchanged alcohol. The bromobutane is again the lower layer and is collected. Another washing step was done this time with water to remove most of the hydrochloric acid. This is done to prevent a vigorous reaction during the next washing step, which is with saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate.
When washing with sodium bicarbonate, an excessive care must be taken not to build pressure inside the funnel. Thus frequent venting is needed. And finally, to remove most of the water in the formed emulsion, I washed it with some saturated sodium chloride solution. Unfortunately, this didn't work as well as I expected to, so I continued the drying by adding some anhydrous sodium sulfate. The salt definitely helped a bit, but the solution was still cloudy. It turned out that this cloudiness was caused not by emulsion, but from suspension. Probably some of the sodium bicarbonate had precipitated during the washing steps. You can see that when I filtered it through some filter paper, it all came perfectly clear. The only thing left to do now, to get pure product, is to distill it. So a simple distillation was arranged and the flask heated on an oil bath. Everything that came below 96 degrees was discarded. Then I changed the flask and collected everything between 96 and 103 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of bromobutane is 102. This temperature interval might seem a bit wide, but the purity of the product is more than enough to do the Wurt synthesis reaction. For some more specialized purposes, I recommend a second distillation. In the distilled flask, I was left with some high boiling liquid which is probably dibutyl ether released as a side product. My final yield was 136 grams, which corresponds to a percent yield of 83.4. So that was all for the synthesis of bromobutane. Give it a thumb up if you like it and share this video. In the next video, I will show you how I turned the bromobutane into octane using sodium in the Wurt synthesis reaction. Make sure you won't miss it by hitting the subscribe button and turning the notifications bell on. Now that I have a decent amount of the bromo alkane, I will be able to make a lot of other very well known reactions, like converting it to azide and then to amine or just alkylate something. I can also turn it into Grignard reagent and make even more things from there. Leave a comment down below what you'd like to see the most. Finally, I want to say special thanks to my first supporter on Patreon. If you want to support me, you can do so by going to my Patreon page, for which I will leave a link down in the description and choosing one of the plans. As a Patreon, you will get some special privileges, more for which you can learn about on the page.